Now we're back. The next thing we want to talk about is weights and pins. So basically, you've arranged everything. You need to secure your pattern to the fabric. You need pins or weights. Weights, anything as long as they're small, portable, and heavy. So I have these little dumbbells that I've had for years and I don't use to exercise, but I use them to weigh down patterns. You put down your patterns and you cut around. If I'm dealing with particularly slippery fabric, I use both the pins and the weights. So those are things to keep in mind. So what are the rules of pinning really as in what's the importance? So for instance, let's say I want to pin this pattern piece here. So whether you're using a pattern piece or you're just drawing directly with chalk is the same principle. Let me explain. If you're drawing directly with chalk, once you've had your fabric arranged just the way you want, I advise you pin the corners or any other areas down just to secure both layers of the fabric as you can see so that it doesn't move or shift around when you're cutting. But now let's just say we're using this pattern. How do we pin? Are there any rules about pinning? The way I was taught was to make sure the sharp ends are all within the pattern. You don't want anything sticking out of the pattern so that it doesn't interfere with your scissors. So at the corners, you usually pin at a 45 degree angle. And on the straight, you just pin parallel to the edge of the, the pattern. Another thing you notice, I'm not lifting the uh, pattern up when I'm pinning. I'm trying to move the fabric as little as possible. So I push one end and I just lift slightly and push it out. So we're really just trying not to move things around too much. Most importantly, you just want your pattern to be very secure. And so feel free to use as many pins as you like. I'll just go on and pin the rest of this uh, pattern down. So we have our pattern secured. You can see it's not going anywhere. I wouldn't advise you to lift it up like this if your fabric is very sheer. But this type of fabric you can see I can lift it up. Now a weight is always good if the fabric is very slippery. This is a particularly large weight. You can use something smaller like <laughs> I'm just using my camera cover but something about this size. You can get something small and heavy like metallic washers and use that to weigh your pattern pieces down. Now we've pinned and everything is ready to use. The next thing is to add your seam allowance. If you open your clothing you see where two pieces are joined together and there's always that bit of extra fabric that is your seam allowance. So your seam allowance technically is the distance between your stitching line and the edge of the fabric once it's cut out. It will make more sense once we start sewing. But at this point, what you should note is that this is where you should add your seam allowance. If you have a pattern you drafted and you've already included seam allowance within the pattern, you can just cut. But if it's a pattern like this one where I haven't included the seam allowance, this is the point where you should add your seam allowance. Your seam allowance can be as little as an eighth or two inches. It depends on what you're doing. Conventionally, I use half an inch or one cm. So how do you add it? You can use a ruler or you can use your measuring tape. So all I have to do is just make sure it's at half an inch where I want it and I'll mark it off with chalk. I'm just going to make little dash dashes or dotted lines, broken lines. Because of the thickness of chalk, most likely when I'm cutting, I'll cut within the line of the chalk so I don't end up adding more than I intended. 
So I'm just going to go around and add the seam allowance at half an inch. Now I don't usually use a tape myself because the edges are not always very straight. I much prefer to use a ruler. Now where do you need to add the seam allowance? You add it where you're going to join two pieces together. I'm going to join this bottom to another piece. I'm going to put a sleeve. If there's no sleeve, it's a sleeveless garment, you still need seam allowance. I'm going to join the shoulders. I'm going to do something at the neck. So I'll put the seam allowance there. Uh, now how much seam allowance do I need? Standard is half an inch. It could be more, it could be less. Usually if it's even less than half an inch, I'll still cut at half an inch and sew because it's easier to sew at half an inch than trim it down. So it really depends on what I'm sewing and the type of fabric I'm working with. But word of advice, when in doubt, it's better to do more than less. If you're not sure how much seam allowance you need for something, you should go more. I hardly go more than an inch unless I'm very unsure about what I am making and I want to give myself some wiggle room to correct myself. But standard is half an inch. Now we're back. So you have your pattern pinned down. You have your seam allowance added. Now it's time to cut. Cutting is a practice thing. I'm not a fast cutter. I just try to be accurate. Accuracy is more important than speed. Now in situations where I use chalk like this, I always try to cut within the chalk line because the chalk can be a bit thick. I usually sharpen my chalk butts just to be careful and make sure I don't make my seam allowance bigger than it is. Now I never freehand my seam allowance, I always measure it properly. I pre prefer to err on the side of caution. So sometimes I might just cut out with the pattern piece like this and sometimes depending on what I'm working on I might trace out this pattern as it is with chalk and remove the pattern piece. It really depends on what I'm doing but the most important thing is to make sure my layers of fabric have been pinned down so that nothing shifts. As you can see here there are two layers. You, do know, you don't want anything moving around. The main thing you want to hold down your pattern as you cut. I, uh, there's no rule to it. I find a comfortable corner to start from and I start cutting and that's it. So I can start from here. I'm going to just start from here. What I do, I keep my hand on my fabric, take nice long smooth strokes. See it's not about speed. I just cut, I turn it around. Now uh, here, I turn it around. Here, I think I'll hold the pattern instead. Now uh, I just lift the corner up, get the scissors in there. Once again, hold the pattern down. And take nice long strips. And I cut that out and I move on. Now. When you're cutting curves, I start, I like to hold my curves and I just turn my scissors and that's a curve, I have another straight line, and this, I have another straight line, same thing, I'm just going to hold the edge, I'm trying not to lift the pattern too much, I hold the edge that is smaller. See, I'm taking nice long strokes like that, and then we get to this part. And that brings us to the end. Um, we're done till the next video. So you see, it's very simple. You pin your pattern, you shape your pattern, you cut out your pattern, and you start working. As you can see, my lines are all facing the same direction. Uh, it's even, and they 
there can be errors, there can be flaws, but it's not the end of the world. But you strive to be as accurate as possible. So, see you in the next video and when we're going to start sewing. And get your machines ready. Bye!